Welcome back guys, this is Dr. Somji. Today I'm going to be talking about something that actually nearly every member of my family has, is dark circles. So what are they? How are they caused? And also, how can you treat them? So there's many different reasons for why you have dark circles. And to find out what actually works, you need to determine what is causing them. And sometimes you've got a number of different causes and therefore you need to do a number of different actual treatments. And that's the reason why dark circles probably are the most difficult things to treat. And what I want you to do is take this video, save it somewhere, mainly because it could save you getting unnecessary treatments, wasting money on eye creams that don't work, and also sometimes having unsafe treatments that might not be right for you. So you might even end up with more dark circles as a result of it. So we're gonna go through absolutely everything so you know exactly how to essentially diagnose yourself and also which treatments have worked. What are the types of dark circles? Well, one of the main ones that we see is pigmentation. So for instance, the skin underneath the eye has more pigmentation. This is more common in say my skin type, where sometimes people do have like a, almost like a hue of a darker skin that sits circumferentially around the eyes. This is really difficult to treat. Things like, things like that would add more volume to the eye are not gonna affect this. The only things that are gonna work are things that are essentially depigmentation agents. So you might look at chemical peeling, for instance. It's quite common to do some aggressive chemical peels around this area. It takes a lot, very, it takes, it takes months of preparation to do this correctly because if you're gonna essentially put a chemical peel on the area, if you don't prep the skin and you don't reduce what we call your tyrosinase inhibitors, you don't introduce tyrosinase inhibitors to the skin, these are essentially enzymes that reduce the amount of pigmentation that's naturally produced within your skin prior to a procedure then you might end up with darker skin. So chemical peeling should only be done in specialized clinics where we're used to doing this for you, managing the skin around the eyes, which is also very, very difficult and very sensitive as well, but they can be quite effective. So there are some like TCA chemical pills you can use particularly around the eyes, as well as even stronger chemical pills such as phenol pills. But you have to really manage that correctly and sometimes there can be a lot of downtime and a lot of risk involved. Actually at home, some of the things that I've used and I've uh, prescribed to patients are um, deep pigmentation products. So things that are good for hyperpigmentation that you can use cautiously around the eyes. This is not medical advice, but I always say that you should really seek um, your doctor or a dermatologist that knows how to push these ingredients. So some, um, some, some people like to use kojic acid, creams with kojic acid, arbutin, as well as retinoids around the eyes to re really reduce it. One cream that I like to give patients is called the Cosmolan 2 cream. You can apply it just to the orbital bone. It will diffuse around the eye area and it also lighten that area. And it can be used quite nicely. So look, like I said, pigmentation is the most difficult thing. You can also use Q-Switch ND Ag Laser around the eyes for darker skin type. That can help reduce the pigmentation. But again, I'm gonna disappoint you guys. The maximum that I have got with these treatments in clinic is probably around 30% reduction in pigmentation. Doesn't sound a lot, but it can make the difference between being able to cover it with makeup or not. So the next uh, main cause of dark circles is shadowing and shadowing secondary to loss of volume underneath the eyes. So this is a contentious subject because some people are actually born with a hollow under eye area. It's called the tear trough in this area. It's called an anatomical tear trough, which is basically the area between the middle of your eye over here, near your nose, to where your pup pupil sits. And this area sometimes represents as a trough. It's quite common to be able to put dermal filler in this area cautiously, as well as a fat transfer in that area. Once you do that, you don't have so much of a hollow underneath the eyes and suddenly that area looks a lot more, lot more lighter. Particularly for patients that say, well, look, sometimes I've got pigmentation and I've got hollowness, but I can cover pigmentation with some makeup, but I can't cover the hollowness. So you might be a good candidate for a tear trough. Now there's many different contentious subjects about tear trough, especially on YouTube, where people are saying, ah, I can never inject tear trough. Well, look, 
Tear trough in the right candidate is good. People that shouldn't have a tear trough are anyone that's got very thin skin underneath the eyes. Secondly, if people have puffiness in the morning, they're not good candidates for tear trough. But if you see the right medical professional who knows what they're doing within the tear trough area, for example, I've done thousands of treatments over the last 12 years with tear troughs and I don't get any long-term complications. The next cause is individuals that have like a bluish tinge underneath the eyes. So this is what we call a vascular cause. So right underneath the skin, you've got what we call a venous plexus that sits just underneath that area. So it gives this, particularly in lighter skin types, it has this bluish tinge in the area. This can be very, very difficult to reduce because actually you can't remove the veins underneath the eyes. There are some specific lasers that you can use on periorbital veins. They tend to be what we call long pulse NDAG treat treatments and they're great for reducing that. So again, you need to see a specialist doctor in that area to ensure that you limit things like scarring. If you reduce those veins in that area, yes, you can get an improvement. Also, sometimes in surgery, I do something called nanofat, which are smaller fat cells and mixed with stem cells, so it's, uh, SVF, that can be injected almost like an emulsion just underneath the skin. It gives a little bit of a better reflective quality and it masks those small veins in that area. It can be very, very useful and also it tends to last long as well. So these are some of the treatments that you can have if you have that bluish tinge. The next cause of dark circles is puffiness underneath the eyes. Puffiness can be caused by sometimes venous congestion, impaired lymphatic drainage, as well as um, prolapse of the fat pad that sits underneath the eye, the subavicularis oculi fat pad. And that could be even genetic, so we terms almost like eye bags. Now, if you're gonna try and put filler in an area where you've got eye bags, that's gonna be a bad sign. It's gonna be bad for you. You're gonna entrap more water and that bag could get worse. Also, even fat transfer in that area is probably not good. The best treatment in this scenario is actually surgical. Sometimes you can resect that fat pad or you can take some of that fat pad away or you can also reposition that fat pad in a better position so it's not puffy. This is either done through a transcutaneous or transconjunctival blepharoplasty, which is a surgery specific um, to the eye area, to the under eye area. So look, you might try and do certain treatments to reduce that. It's going to be futile, unfortunately. There are some specific cases where you can use needled radiofrequency into that fat pad to just reduce the fat within that area and give a little bit of an improvement. It's likely going to be temporary and it won't be permanent. And like I said, in this specific case, I never advise surgery for people just first off, but this is something that normally the surgical uh, treatment is going to be a lot better. The next cause of dark circles is actually age-related concern or even lifestyle. So what if you're not sleeping? What if you're drinking too much caffeine? What if you're drinking too much alcohol? You're smoking, you're taking drugs. You're gonna get reduced. You're gonna get more venous congestion underneath the eyes. The skin's gonna be thinner. You're gonna see more wrinkling. You're gonna get damage with your DNA within your skin. So it's really important that, yes, you can do all of these things that I mentioned, but more than that, if you live healthily, you get enough sleep, eight hours of sleep a day, you're well hydrated, you stay away from the bad stuff, there's a lot of bad stuff out there, then actually your under eye area will look a lot more improved. Also reducing the salt in your diet will reduce the water retention and therefore the puffiness underneath the eyes. So it pays well to live well. So that's it. These are the many causes of dark circles. You might have one of those causes or a combination of those causes. So if you have any questions of how to address your dark circles, just let me know in the comments below. If you feel like I haven't mentioned about certain treatments, also let me know as well. Don't forget to click the link to subscribe as well as that bell button so you'll be the first to know when new videos come out.